got the chair there. We start with a gentle march. You can either hold the chair or let go of the chair. That's up to you. Well done. Or if you're staying in your chair, that's fine. How's the posture today? How are we feeling? Are we standing up nice and tall, stretching our head towards the ceiling? Well done. And just slow the march down a little bit. You may need to hold on because if you go slightly slower, it's a little harder. So I'm just lifting the knee, lowering, lifting, lowering. So I'm going super slow, having to work hard with my balance. I'm not letting the leg drop down, I'm lowering the leg. And then just speed it up gently so you get back into your balance. So you're back into your rhythm now. Let's do some head turns. Use the chair to hold on if you need to. Turn the head fully to look over one shoulder and fully to look over the other shoulder, back to the front. Just notice your neck, was, was your neck stiff at all on one side? I noticed my neck was stiff on this side for some reason. So turn the head fully one way, notice how your neck feels, and then turn your head the other way. How does that feel? Does that feel stiffer or about the same? Well done, okay. We're gonna do our finger pointing today, so hold on if you need to. Stick your hand out in front of you and look at your index finger. Follow the finger out to the side, as far around as you can. Sweep it in front of you and keep looking at the finger as you turn it right round to the other side of you. Well done. So let's do that again. Sweep the hand out, look at the finger while you're marching and then bring the hand right in front of you and across the front of the body. Well done. We're gonna swap hands now. So if you need to change hands on the chair, change hands on the chair. And let's have the hand out in front of us. Push it away from the body first. Go away from the body. Well done. Follow it with your eyes. Then bring it front and then across the body and point behind you. Look over that shoulder if you can. And once more, all the way out. Maybe looking slightly behind you if you can. And then all the way back in across. Bend the arm, point it behind you, look behind and back to the front. Well done, okay. Just relax the legs a little bit. That's quite a lot of marching, isn't it? <laughs> Let's do a bit of paddling instead. So we just lift the heels, one then the other. We spread the toes on the, on the floor or in the shoe and we give our feet a good massage. Okay, if you can let go with both hands, have a go. If you need to hold on with one, that's fine. Let's roll the shoulders at the same time. So I'll just show you from the front. I'm just keeping those feet moving, but I'm rolling the shoulders. Well done. Just feel your shoulders. How do they feel? Is there tension in them? Does the right shoulder feel the same as the left shoulder? Do you need to do a bit more loosening on one side than the other? <laughs> well done and relax down little march again okay we're going to do we're going to keep our feet still for the moment this is quite a subtle exercise but it's very good for balance so first of all you can hold the chair at any time you want keep the feet flat on the floor and just lean towards one foot so most of the weight's on one foot we're not changing our feet position we're just leaning from one side to the other now, because your feet are hip distance apart, you should feel quite stable with that forward and forward and sorry, side to side lean. Well done. Now, a little bit harder, so be careful. Use the chair if you're, if you're worried about falling backwards. Keep your hands on the chair. So just lean forwards a little bit, come back to the center and lean back just a very tiny bit. So you're just pushing the weight onto the front of the feet and you're pushing your weight onto the heels of the feet. They're not lifting, the feet are staying flat, but you can almost feel them lifting in the shoes, can't you? Okay, so we've done side to side, forward and back. We're gonna go in a figure of eight this time. So I'm gonna put all the weight onto my right front toe. Then I'm gonna draw the weight back to my left heel. And I'm gonna push my weight forward to my left toe. Then I'm gonna push my weight back to my right heel. So we go forward, round in a figure of eight, round and round. Just go your own speed. Imagine you're drawing a figure of eight and be aware of the soles of your feet 
So you're pushing the weight onto the heels and then the toes and the heels and the toes. Well done. Try and go the other way round this time. I'll start with you. So starting on the front right, the weight is on the toes at the front right. Then I pull back to the back right heel. Then I push forward to the front left toe. I pull back to the back left heel, forward to the front right toe. So off you go, figure of eight. Have we got any belly dancers here? <laughs> well done. So it's quite subtle, isn't it? But your brain is actually having to do quite a lot of work with the balance as well. Very good. Just relax for a moment and march out. Well done, well done. Okay, let's get the shoulders warmed up a little bit more now. We're going to keep the feet still again. We're going to raise both shoulders up, squeeze them up to our ears, and then as we release, oh, we just sort of shake down. So from the side, it's a big squeeze and a raise, and then a oh, shake down. Let the knees bend a little bit. Now this time, as you bring those shoulders up, lift the rib cage up a little bit as well. Oh, good. And then as last little bit, lift the heels a little bit. So shoulders, rib cage, just a little bit on the heels up and down. Do a couple more of those while I just have a quick look at you. <laughs> well done. I like to breathe in on the way up and out as I sink down. <sighs> one last one. Feel your shoulders, feel your ribs, feel your heels and down. Very good. A lot of awareness work today we're doing. Okay, little shake out, little march. So let's move down to warm up the waist now. So we take the feet a little bit wider so we've got a stable base side to side, don't we? Use the chair if you need to. Long body, so head reaching for the ceiling and just start with flat feet, sliding one hand down the leg and then slide the other hand down the leg. Now this is good for your sidewards balance because if you think about where your head's going, your head's going right over the side of the body and then it's going the other side. And also the fluid inside your head is starting to swim around a bit, side to side. Imagine that cup of tea and you're, you're swimming the cup of tea side to side. The fluid in your head is starting to move. So this we're training our balance with this movement of the head as well. Okay, if you want to go a little further into it, all you do is you raise the heel a little bit more, don't you? Lift the elbow and push the arm a little bit lower. Then you bring in the muscles a little bit more. Now you, breathe, you bring in the side muscles, don't you? And it's a little bit harder for balance because we're balancing with one heel lifted. If it's making you feel dizzy at all, just stop and come back to the middle. Well done. Okay, we're gonna come all come back to the middle now with flat feet. As we flatten our hands, we're gonna keep our hands flat, so palm away from you, push diagonally, and as you push, lift this heel here and rotate the hip a little bit. Reach forward, you might need to hold on. Come back to the middle, push the arm, rotate the hip, lift the heel. Well done, back to the center each time. You can do them slowly, you can do them faster. You can reach further, you can test your balance. Well done, excellent work. Tum is in, my strong core muscles. Let's do two more of those. Very good, everyone, very good. Very nice, Sue, both Sue's. <laughs> okay, let's relax for a minute. We're gonna do the hardest one in this sequence, which is the up and over. We do a little bend of the knees if we want to. And then we launch one hand up and over the top. So come back to the center each time, bend the knees, launch up and over. And if you want to, you can lift the heel of the side that you're launching up, and that gives you even more stretch. So big stretch from the tiptoe to the tip of the finger. So nice long body. If you have enough, just have a rest. Remember, see how you feel. And we'll just speed up for the last couple of these because this is a good all round exercise. Can you get a bit of a rhythm going? Bending, stretching, bending, stretching. Well done, everyone. Okay, and down we come. So we've warmed up the whole side of our body, haven't we? We've got to warm up the inner, the inner spine now, which is the twisting action. So keep your feet still, hold on if you need to. And you're just twisting around. If you're not holding on, the arm is coming around with you. 
So turn the head and the shoulders so you're looking side to side. And again, the fluid in your head is starting to swirl around a bit. So just be careful. Focus on different things around the room. And let the arms just flop onto the body wherever they land. Now, some of the people that feel a little bit more confidence with their balance, they can twist around further and look over the shoulder so you can literally see the back wall behind you, some of you, if you feel okay to do that. Well done. Come back to the front, just rest for a moment. We're going to make loose fit hands, same action as we swing, we bend our front arm and we tap under the collarbone, tap under the collarbone. This is a stimulation exercise. It's supposed to stimulate the immune system around the lung. So you're tapping the lung under the collarbone. The other hand is just tapping on the kidney area between the ribs and the hips. Well done. So don't tap too hard. <laughs> well done. Just come back to the front now and do a little tap all over the front of the lungs and make a nice noise. Ah, oh, no one can hear you make a noise. Ah, oh, I'm the only one embarrassing myself. I'm on the recording. <laughs> and shake those arms up. This is good for helping with congestion in the top of the lungs as well. Let's go back to the march now. Let's get that heart rate up again. So march, march, march. Brilliant. Okay, I'm changing the order a little bit today just to keep, keep the heart rate up. We're going to go straight into the hands to knees touching. If you need to use the chair, just do one side, then the other. Just do it as best as you can, keeping safe. I'm going quite quickly, but you can go slower. I'm going right to left. If you're sitting, that's great, Cecilia. Yes, yeah, swapping the hands over. Fantastic. So this works both hemispheres of the brain, the right and the left brain, because we're swapping right hand to left knee, left hand to right. What am I talking about? <laughs> left hand to right knee, right hand to left knee. <laughs> it works the brain, Trish. <laughs> Okay, and relax. So that's got the heart rate up a little bit more. Let's come down to warm up the lower back. Give it a little rub here, a little massage on that lower back, and we'll get working in that area now by pushing it backwards and pushing it forwards. This is a really good exercise if you've been sat down for any length of time because it stimulates the hip joints, the bottom muscles, and it stretches out the front of the hips. So when you're sat down, this bit at the front of the hips here gets squashed all the time. So as you stretch the front of the hips, you can imagine all the blood can run into this area here and stimulate it and get it going there. Well done. We're going to stay at the front. So once you come forward now, stay at the front. See if you can elongate the spine even more by dropping the elbows back and lifting the chest. Breathe. Ah. Good balancing, everybody. Well done. And gently relax. Okay. Let's move down into our hip circles now. So again, you hold on if you need to. And it's a, just a nice, big, slow circle round. And as you're doing it, just bring your awareness to the soles of your feet. Can you feel, a bit like we did at the beginning of the class when we did that figure of eight, can you feel the different pressures around the soles of the feet? Let's go back the other way as well. So as I go to the side, I slightly feel the pressure on the side of my feet as I push my bottom back. I feel the pressure on my heels as I push my hips forward. I feel the pressure on my toes. Now, I know some of you don't have much awareness in your feet for various reasons, but just if you can't feel it, just imagine you can feel it. There's a lot of research now coming about, out about the power of imagination with the body. If you imagine you can feel your toes, it's almost doing as much good as if you could actually feel them. This imagination in the body is very powerful. Okay, let's march it out now. So let's have a quick look on my chart to see what else we've got to do. Yes, let's just come down. We've warmed up the hips and the lower back. Let's warm up the knees. I know some of you've got sore knees. So hold the chair, push the bottom back, and stand up strong. Don't go too low to start with, we're just warming them up. But make sure these knees don't come forward. Imagine you were standing in front of a brick wall, and your toes are touching the brick wall, and your knees are not allowed to touch the brick wall. They have to come 
stay in line or come back slightly. Well done. Now, just a few more, and I want you to emphasize a squeeze at the bottom. <laughs> so as you come up, squeeze your bottom and push your hips forward just a little bit, almost like that one we did there, but not, not quite. So it's bottom back, and it's a squeeze. We're waking up these buttock muscles. You may have been sitting on them quite a while. <laughs> if it's too sore on the knees, I know some of you got sore knees, don't, don't just... Uh, Jeff, if your knees are sore, just do the squeezing at the bottom. Just squeeze the bottom here. Squeeze the bottom. Well done. Okay. And shake the legs out. Have a little march. And we're going to go straight into the balance work now. So one leg balance. Use the chair. I'm putting my chair there so you can see my balance leg. I'm lifting my balance leg up. I'm putting my tummy in. And I'm just holding it nice and steady. Don't forget, you can let go of the chair as much or as little as you like, using one finger. If you want to, lifting the finger up, playing the piano, stroking the cat, all those different ones that we've learned in the class. And down we come, well done. Let's change feet again, or legs rather. So nice and tall, strong body, just lift the one leg, we're balancing on one leg. Very good, everyone. Fight for it, make it as hard as you can, so if it's easy, Turn the head, well done, Sue. Shut the eyes if you want to. You know what to do to make it harder. Okay, excellent, shaking. We're just going to change back to the other leg. We're going to pull the heel up just slightly behind us, not too high, that we're you know straining the back leg muscle. We're just dropping the knee down and pulling the heel up. Well done. Good balancing, everybody. Well done. And release, and let's try the other side. So making it as hard as you need to. So if you're wobbling, that's a good sign. That means you're fighting. You're on the edge of your comfort zone, fighting the balance. <laughs> well done, okay. Pulls the back of the leg a little bit there, doesn't it? You're right, Arthur, still? Yeah, good. Excellent work. Okay, let's turn those two into an exercise together with a swing. So we just come up the front, we balance for a few seconds, we stay on the same leg, and we swing it back. So practice this. This is a dynamic exercise with the leg moving, and we're still balancing. Well done. Let's do two more there. It's also quite strengthening, isn't it, on that upper leg? Can we do one more? Very good, everyone. Let's change sides again. And if you're sitting, just swing those legs around a bit, David and Cecilia and whoever else is sitting. So tummy in, nice strong posture, bend that front leg up and swing it back. I'm keeping the knee about the same angle, forwards and back, aren't I? The knee's about the same angle. Well done. This is working the core muscle here as well, as we draw the knee up and back. Okay, last one. Very good, everyone. Just relax. Have a little drink if you need to. Have a breather. While I just have a quick look at what we're going to do next. My felt pen tip on my board is getting very faint. I need to, I need to check what we're doing next. Oh yeah, we're doing some we're doing some circles with the uh, with the feet next. So we're still on the balance section, and we're just going to do our normal balance here, but we're going to focus on circling the ankle. So foot up when we're ready, three ankle circles one way, nice big circle with the ankle while we're balancing. Well done. When you've done three one way, see if you can do three the other way. If you need a rest in between, that's fine. Well done. So you should be doing three clockwise, three anti-clockwise. When you're ready, change legs. So balance on one leg. Get ready to circle the ankle round. Big, slow circles, three one way and the other way. Well done. And you're focusing and concentrating while you're doing this, aren't you? Excellent work, okay. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're just gonna point and flex the foot. So same balance. I'll just turn it to the side so you can see a little bit. That's the flex, that's the point. So flex and point. Flex and point, two more. Flex and point, flex and point. Well done. Let's change legs. So when you're ready, lift the other knee. Flex, that's it, David. Well done, David. Burrell, oh, we haven't got the other David today. Have we only one David. Two and 
three and four and five. Good. So we're doing quite a bit of work on those ankle joints today. Well done. Okay, the last sort of circle exercise in this one is where we lift the knee and circle from the hip joint. So if I show you slightly from the side, we lift the knee, imagine someone's looking at your kneecap from the front and you draw them a circle. Can you see that? I'm drawing a circle. You may not be able to see it so well with my black leggings on. Now those circles were going out and round and in. Now we do the opposite. As we lift the knee, we bring, the, bring it across the body first, down and then up and out. So it's in and down, out and up. It's quite a strong movement from the hip. And some of you are balancing without holding on, aren't you, Sue? Well done. <laughs> Change legs when you're ready. So at least uh, holding the chair as possible, maybe one fingertip. Or on the wall, Joan. <laughs> That's fine. As long as you don't get sweat, sweaty finger point prints on your paint. <laughs> I went straight into the other way. Sorry, that was a bit fast, but hopefully you changed direction. Well done. It feels a bit like a massage in the hip joint, that one, doesn't it? Okay, let's have a quick look at what we're doing now. Okay, we tried this on Friday, didn't we, Sue? The stepping. Let's hope I get it right this time. So, we're not doing the V-step like we did the other week, but what we're doing is we're just imagining we're just standing on the pavement or whatever. We're about to step with our right foot forward as if we were going to take a normal step. So just actually, let's just do that. Step forward and back. Just imagine you were just taking a step forward with the right leg and back. That's the first thing. Now, this time, as we step forward, we've got to change our mind and put the leg out to the side. So just watch, I step, I change my mind and put my leg out to the side slightly. So it's a pretend little step out to the side. I'll show you from here. So it's a little step and then I change my mind and I step to the side. Try and get it uh, quite the change of the mind quite quickly. So step change, yeah? Don't change it before you step. <laughs> so you imagine you're just stepping forward and then you quickly have to change your mind. Okay, one more like that, step forward, change your mind, good. Okay, now we're gonna add a little bit extra onto that. So as we step forward and change our mind, this foot lands out to the side, we're gonna bring our back leg towards it. So we ended up across a little bit. So you might need the chair quite close to start with. So step forward, change your mind, and then bring the other foot towards it. So you. You've avoided something. So someone might have been coming straight towards you on their mobile phone <laughs> and they're not looking at you. They're heading straight for you like a game of chicken. And you've had to suddenly change your mind and you're out of their way. You're on the other side. Yeah. Well done. A couple more of those. So imagine you're stepping. You've quickly got to move out the way and you're on the other side of the pavement. Okay. We're going to try that with the other foot now. So you might need to adjust your chair because you need a bit of a gap on the other side. So as I step forward with the other leg, just have a practice stepping forward first. Have you got room on this side to go off to the side? Imagine you are on one side of the pavement. So change your mind and then just bring your foot back to the beginning. Pretend to step, change your mind, bring your foot back to the beginning. One more step change your mind, foot back to the beginning. Then we add the extra bit at the end now. Change your mind and then bring that back foot right over the other side of the pavement. So you've got a gap here to let whoever was there to come through, step back to the beginning. So step, change your mind, come back. Well done. Step, change your mind. I'm on the other side of the pavement. Well done, everyone. <laughs> you have to imagine someone's coming straight towards you and you're thinking, oh, I've got to change my mind and get out of the way quick. Okay, well done. Let's have a little march now. Let's have a little march. Okay, how am I doing for time? Okay, I'm going to do a couple of reaches now. So if you're standing up, if you want to stand up for these, we're not marching, we're just doing our reaches forward. So you could have a stand if you, if you feel able to. We've got the chair there with both hands. We're feeling nice and safe, hopefully. <laughs> Long body. Now, straight body, heels down, one arm forward, 
just lean as far forward as you can without your hips, your heels lifting. Keep, try to keep your heels down and then pull yourself back. Well done. Try to imagine you're like a plank of wood. You're pulling your tummy in, you're keeping your heels down and you're just going as far as you can forward with the other arm. Well done. And then we're going to let the heels rise and we're going to let the bottom come out. So as the heels rise, the bottom comes out. We can go a lot further with our reach, can't we? Well done. Try to start the reach first, sorry, before the heels lift. So reach, 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 then heels lift, then bottom out and gradually go further. Can you feel the difference? Let's do one more on each side. So start with the first one, lean, and then as the heels come off, as the bottom goes back, we can go a lot further and keep our balance. Well done. And last side, lean forward, heels off, bottom back, reach, 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 reach. Well done. Very good. And just relax the legs. It's quite a strong pull on the back of the legs on that one, isn't it? We're going to do the top covered reach now. So use the chair if you need to. This is the one where we fully go on our tiptoes first. I have one hand up. And I really extend on my tip of my tiptoes, then I jackknife, so my hips go back, I reach into the top cupboard, I come back to vertical, then I go down. Well done. Change sides, so it's the up, the jackknife from the hip, the up, and the down. Well done, everyone. One more each side, one more each side, up. Push forward. So if you're in your chair, that's it. Lean forward. Very good. Pull yourself back to upright and come down. And last one, pushing up. I can feel it in my calf muscles. Can you work in your calves as well? And down. And well done. Just shake those legs out. And we're going to have a sit down now. So wherever your chair is, don't plonk yourself down, remember? Oh, too late <laughs> for some of you. Stand with your legs to the back of the chair and when you're ready, lower your bottom down. Ooh, hopefully you've got your band handy with you. I haven't, so I've got to get my band. I forgot to remind you about the band, Doreen. Have you got a band with you? Oh, you have. Oh, well done. Lovely. Okay. So we've all got our bands, hopefully. Now you've got a choice on this one, remember? The harder version is the arms out, pulling back. Or the other version is the one we always used to do in our class, this one here and back. The, the same aim is to squeeze the back muscles together. This one works the upper back a little bit more. This one works the middle back and towards the lower back. So you choose which one you want to do. And we're gonna go together. Are we all ready? So either arms out like this, if you're doing this one. Have one practice go. So pull the arms apart, draw the band back so it touches just by the chest. And my elbows are behind me. And then come forward. How did that feel? Remember, it's got to feel hard. <laughs> Sorry about that, but it does. <laughs> if it feels easy, there's no point doing it really. So we, we're only going to do five of them. So we're going to make them as hard as we can. So by the time we get to number three, we're like, oh, this is really hard. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Breathe in. As we breathe out, pull back. Pull one, two, squeeze the shoulder blades, release, breathe in. Good, breathe out, pull back. One, two, squeeze the shoulder blades, release, breathe in, in. In number three, pull back, back, squeeze, release, breathe. In number four, pull back, back, squeeze, release as you breathe in slowly for three. And last one, pull back, back, squeeze, release, release, release. Well done. Not too much after on that straining, yeah? So shake out those wrists, loosen off those. Hands. Hopefully, if, you, if your shoulders are painful, if you do that one, go back to this one, yeah? If the shoulders are painful. Right, let's pop the band around the back because we're doing the front of the chest now. 
And again, up you can have one practice one to get the band the right length. So were you struggling by the time you got to number three? If you're not, you need a stronger band or a shorter band <laughs> or two bands together. If you've got two bands, if you've got a strong, medium and light one, you can always do two together. Have you had your practice one, everyone? Yeah. So sitting up nice and tall, you know you've got your band the right length. Just for one minute for a couple of people. Sit up nice and tall, my back's nice and straight. I breathe in to start with. And as I breathe out, I push out, out. I squeeze under the armpit. I come back in slowly. One, two, three. I breathe out, out. Squeeze, push the band away from you as far as you can. Come back slowly, breathing in. One, two, three. Push out strong, breathing out. One, Two, squeeze under the armpit, push the band away, come back slowly. Two, three, I think this is number four, is it? Four, four, squeeze, breathe in, in. And last one, push, push, in, 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 well done. Okay, well done. Just take the band away and shake the arms out. You right there, Cecilia? Yeah? Okay, we're going to even, okay, just do what you can. We're either sitting on the band like this under the bottom to do this one, or you can put the band under your feet if you want to. So whichever is easiest for you to get to. So either the band under the feet or the band under the bottom. We're gonna work the bicep muscle, the front muscle. This is the muscle you need for carrying things. So if you're carrying your shopping, this front muscle needs to be strong here. And we lock the elbows into the side. We don't let the elbows move. And all we do is fold the fists towards the shoulders with the elbows down. Okay, so I've got my band here now. You can have one practice go. So you're probably here to start with. <laughs> you can see me, okay? Draw the elbows back. And then all you do is squeeze the band to the shoulder tightly. Focus on the bicep. And then as you lower slowly, you're working on the way down as well. So is the band the right uh, length for you? Make sure it's hard enough. Make sure it's short enough. Here we go. Breathe in. As we breathe out, pull your band up, up, squeeze, release as you breathe in. Breathe out, out, squeeze. Release slowly, so you're working on the way down as well. You're working on the way up, up, squeezing the front of the upper arm. You're working slowly on the way down. Let's do two more. So my elbows are locked into my sides and I'm squeezing. You might not get the fists to the shoulders. Sometimes I stick my thumbs up like a hitchhiker and I see if I can touch my thumbs to my shoulders. Some of you might be able to do that. Oh, well done. So if you've been squeezing, you should feel it in the front of the upper arm there. Okay, let's work the back of the upper arm now by taking the band around the front of the shins. Front of the shins. So you need to sit up nice and tall for these. Well done, everyone. Have one practice go. So get that band as short as you think you need it. Shorter than... Shorter than longer, <laughs> arms are straight, and then have one practice go. Think about it and release. So think about that. Am I going to be able to do five like that? Is that going to be too easy for me? Am I going to need to make the band shorter? Okay, everyone ready? Breathe in. As we breathe out, pull back. One, two, squeeze the tricep muscles. Release slowly. One, two. So breathe out, out, squeeze, chest up, breathe in, 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 draw back, out, out, three, squeeze, release slowly, in, well done, out for number four, squeezing and lifting, bring it back slowly, and your last one, out, out, squeeze, long arms, straighten the arms, low knuckles, in, 
in, in. So hopefully you felt that in the back of the upper arm. So we've built up to five of these now without stopping, haven't we? We'll try and do six next week, seven the week after, and then eight the week after, shall we? You've got that to look forward to. <laughs> okay, so we've done front and back of chest, we've done front and back of arms. So let's just stretch them out now. Leave the band on your lap, give your arms a bit of a shake out. Keep the body nice and long, well done. We're going to take the one arm up as high as we can, keeping the chin off the chest and folding the arm down the back of the neck. Now look up, that's it. Now some of you might be able to do two together. Can you place one hand on top of the other? Well done, everyone. Very nice. <laughs> and gently release. Release. Well done. Roll the shoulders a couple of times. And then you're going to do the chest stretch. So roll the shoulders up, pull them back. Either hold the chair or see if you can get your hands behind you on your back. And pull the elbows back and lift the chest. Breathe. Well done. Lovely work, everyone. And release. Well done. Now we're just going to give ourselves a nice big hug. Whoops. Because no one else is allowed to hug us at the moment, are we? Are you giving yourself a nice hug? Now, keep your hands on the shoulders and then raise the elbows. How high can you get the elbows? And then at the very last minute, let go of the shoulders. Stroke your hands up to your elbows. Stroke your arms up to your wrists. Hands together at the top if you can. And a nice big circle round. Now, can you remember? Well done, Jeff. <laughs> well done. Can you remember which hand you had on top? Was it that one or was it that one? What do you think? Can you remember? Try and do the opposite one. Keep your hands on your shoulders. Lift your elbows. Hold the shoulders. Lift the elbows. Hold the shoulders. Can you see in between the gap now? Can you see me? <laughs> now slide your hands up your upper arms so they're on your elbows. Slide them to your wrists and slide them to your palms if you can. And then all the way back. Lovely stuff and loosen. Okay, we're going to go straight onto the ankle weights today. So put your ankle weights on if you've got them. Don't worry if you haven't got them. I know not everyone's got them. And while everyone else is getting their weights on, we're going to do uh, just a, a strengthening exercise for the legs. So if you haven't got your weights, just sit up nice and tall. Stick one leg out in front of you, resting on the heel. Squeeze that leg up like a plank of wood, hold onto the chair and just raise that leg and hold. Hold. Strong core muscles, strong back muscles, and strong leg muscles. Well done. Lower it slowly and change legs. So if you're getting your weights on, don't worry. We're just doing this. Change legs while we're waiting for everybody. So no problem, don't hurry. We're working hard, aren't we? Change legs again, so straighten the leg up. Are you getting that leg up, Cecilia? Is it coming up, that leg? I can't see it in the camera. I should be able to see the tip of your toe in that camera by now. <laughs> yes, okay, well done. Change legs. Last one now. You're right there, Jeff. You look a bit flushed. Have you been bending forward to put your weights on? Yeah, be careful. If we've been exercising a lot and then you suddenly drop your head down to put your weights on, you can, you can get a bit flushed in the face and there's a lot of blood rushes to the head, so be careful. <laughs> right, is everybody ready? Not quite. Another way of putting the weights on, but if, you, if, you, if you're able to lift the leg and cross the legs, you can put it on like that so you're not leaning forward so much. Or some, there was one person in my class who always used to stand up and just put his, put his foot on the uh, chair to put his weights on. So there's various different ways you can put your weights on. Right, when everybody's ready, shall we stand up strong, knees apart? One, two, three, drive. Up we come, round to the back of our chair. Well done, everyone. We're gonna do our side leg lift. Careful, Doreen, careful. Use your arms if you need to. Use your arms. That's it. Come up carefully and slowly. You're a bit, you're a bit worn out today. 
Careful. Yeah. You can always stay sitting if you want to. You can stay sitting if you want to. Right. We've done these a couple of weeks with the same timing. We'll just quickly go over the timing. So we breathe in at the start. And as we breathe out, we go up for one, two. We squeeze, don't we, and hold. And we come slowly down as we breathe in. One, two, three. You can keep that leg off the ground if you want to. Now, if you want to add a little bit more this time, that outer arm you can bring up when you bring the leg up. You don't have to do that, but if you just want something a little bit extra. So I'm lifting this right leg off the floor now, breathing in. As I breathe out, I'm coming up, up. I'm squeezing and holding, balancing. I'm coming down, down, down. Either rest the leg or keep it off the ground. Up, up. Squeeze, hold and balance. Down, down, down. Rest or hover. Up again, up, up. Squeeze and balance. Well done, everybody. Down, down, down. Two more. Up, up, up. Hold and balance. Down, down, down. Last one. You're right there, David. Are you smiling? <laughs> down, down, down. Oh, that's such a strong exercise on both legs, isn't it? Can you feel it working here? Okay. So if you're in the chair and you want to do some extra work, you don't have to. I'm just going to sit down for a minute. You stay standing, everyone. You can just stretch that leg out to the side, Cecilia or David, and just take it to the side and back. You can leave it on the floor. You leave your heel on the floor, but just get that little opening going in the hip if you want to, yeah? The rest of us are going on the other side standing, but you can stay sitting if you want to. Tall body, remember, tummy in. Let's lift this heel up to where all the weight's on the one leg, breathe in. As we breathe out, we lift, lift, we hold and balance. We come in slowly, breathing in, one, two, Three, we go again, breathing out. One, two, we squeeze and hold the balance. We come back, two, three. Well done, everyone. Up again, up, up, squeeze and hold the balance. In, 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 two to go now. Up, up, squeeze and hold the balance. In, in, in. Is that four? Was that four? Or was that one more to go, Sue? One more to go, is it? Yeah, sorry. One more to go up, up, hold the balance, in, in, in. Oh, and feel that in the hips and the legs. Very good, very good, everyone. Okay, we've got to work the back of the leg, the hamstring muscle. Remember, this muscle works when you pull the heel up behind you. Have a little feel of the back of your thigh. And when you pull the heel up, can you feel something moving in that area here? Have you got a muscle there? Is it working? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do it with wider knees today. I'll show you, if you're in the chair, I'll show you what to do in a minute. But if you've got slightly wider knees today, we're like a triangle. So my feet are wider than my knees. And then I'm going to literally take all my weight onto the one side before I pull this one up and leave my knee out a little bit. And then I transfer the weight onto the other side, leave my knee out and pull that back. Okay, if you're on the chair, all you've got to do on the chair is sit towards the front of the chair and just try to pull the heel up behind you. So just pull the heel up behind you if you're on the chair. That's all, you're still working that muscle there. Okay. Well done, everyone. There's a lot of you still going with that. So let's just do a couple more together. So slightly wider with the legs this week, keeping the knees apart. Let's go up, 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 squeeze, balance, down. Up, up, squeeze, down, down, down. Up, up, squeeze, down, down, down. No one getting cramped today? Up, up, squeeze, down, down, down. One more each side. Up, up, are you squeezing in here? <laughs> down, 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 and last one. Up, up, squeeze, down, 
down, down. Okay, so you should feel that in those muscles there. Just stretch that muscle by kicking it out, resting on the heel, and then the other leg, you just imagine you're sitting down. And you should feel, a, as your bottom goes back, you should feel a stretch in that straight leg. Change legs, so just kick the other leg out, land on the heel. And imagine you're just sitting down with one leg straight and one leg bent. Very good. And you can do that on the chair as well, can't you? Up we come. Super duper. Right, let's move into our calf work now. So just let's have a little, little shake out in between just to loosen off. And we're going to just warm up the calves a bit because we haven't used them for a few minutes. So let's raise onto the tiptoes and back down. Just feel the calf muscles working as you raise up and down. Raise up and down, lovely. Then we're going to do them a little bit slower, same timing that we did our other ones. So when you're ready, breathe in. And as you breathe out, raise, raise, balance. Come back, slowly breathing in, in, down to flat. So breathe out, raise, raise, balance back, down to flat. Now, some of you might want to go not from flat. So as you raise up to the top, some of you, as you come down, might want to just hover to make it a little bit harder to come up, up and hold. But if you need that little rest, when you come down, 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 you can actually rest the heels down if you want to. So it's up, up, Squeeze the calf muscles. Where's your calves? Can you feel them? Down, down, down. If you can't feel them by now, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm feeling mine. Hopefully, you should be feeling yours. Last one. Up, up. Squeeze the calf muscles. Down, down, down. Well done. Just shake those legs out a little bit. You can bend the knees and tap the toes. That's a good way of releasing the calves. Now, if you want to move on to the single calf, you can do, or you can stay on the double calf. That's up to you. So if you're doing the single calf, it's one leg up, and we're raising the heel of the leg that's on the floor. Let's just do three today. We're running a bit short on time. So up, up, down, down, hover or flat foot. Up, up, balance. Lower, lower, hover or flat foot. Last one, up, squeeze and lift. Down, down, down. Oh, that's tough, isn't it, on one leg? Oh, right, one more to go. So other side now. So other side. Notice if one side's a bit weaker than the other. Let's go up, up, balance. Down, down, flat foot or hover. Up. Up, balance on your tiptoe, down, 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 and last one, up, up, squeeze the calf muscle, down, down, and release. Well done, well done, well done. Let's take one foot back and release the calf. If you're in the chair, if you're in the chair, you just do this one, where you push the heel away and pull the toe up, yeah, if you're in the chair. So standing or sitting, that's it, well done David Burrell. And change legs. So if you're sitting, you're just changing legs. If you're standing, you're changing legs. Well done, Natalie. You look like you and Clint are about to start a sprint race there. <laughs> and release. Give those calves a little bit of a rub there, well done. Okay, shall we all sit down now? And do a little bit. Oh, well, have your ball ready. I should have said have your ball ready before you sit down. So if you've got a ball, don't worry if you don't have a ball. You might have a cushion or something, just something squashy you can put between your legs. Well done, Cecilia. Is there playing catch? Nicola and Cecilia are playing catch. Oh, you have to take your ankle weights off, don't you? Sorry, yes, you may. If you've got your ankle weights on. Have a little game of catch if you can. If you haven't got a ball, don't worry, Doreen. You can just clap the hands, clap the hands, just something like that. Yeah, well done. Some people use a cushion or a little, just something they can throw. As long as it's soft and it's not going to uh, smash the ornaments. 
I don't know if my insurance would cover that. Smashed ornaments at home. Don't have anything valuable nearby. <laughs> I know Stella's valuable, David. You can't smash her. No. <laughs> right then, when you're ready. Oh, Natalie and Jen are getting carried away now. Pop the board in between the knees now. Let's have a little squeeze. And then we'll come back and do the wrist work. So sitting up tall. Coming in, shoulders down, chin in, breathe in, and squeeze your knees together. Squeeze your knees together, squeeze up the thighs, and imagine you're clamping your thighs together. Clamp, not your thighs, your hips, sorry, your hips. That's it, well done. And then gently release, stretch those legs out. Okay, we're gonna do it again. So cushion knee, cushion ball, whatever you've got. Breathe in, and as you breathe out, squash the balls, squash, use your thigh muscles. Doreen's found a cushion, well done, Doreen. And clamp those hips together. Well done, we'll do one more. So just stretch the legs out in between, get the blood flowing to them again. Pop the ball or the cushion between your knee. You're gonna hold it a bit longer this time, so squash the cushion, squash the knee. Let that tension go all the way up the thighs till you get to your hips and clamp your hips together. Now, in this position, we're going to pulse the pelvic floor in, in, in. Can you find your pelvic floor while you're clamping your legs? It's quite hard, isn't it? Are you pumping? Are you pumping your pelvic floor in and in and in? Hopefully you are. And then release. Well done. Okay, just a slight grip on the ball now, not, not pressure. And now focus on your pelvic floor properly and draw your pelvic floor in and up. Hold, hold and squeeze, hold and squeeze, hold and squeeze, hold and squeeze, hold and squeeze. And then very gently let it go. Well done. Don't forget to try and breathe while you're squeezing. So draw that pelvic floor in and up, lifting your bottom of your business off the chair, sucking yourself up, 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 up and releasing, well done. And one last one to finish. So a little squeeze on the ball, little, I mean, a big lift up, big lift up, and release, okay, well done. Let's do a little bit for the wrists. If you've got very bad arthritis in the wrist, just be careful with these, they can be quite strong. So let's grab the ball with our thumbs up. And as we push the ball away from us, just relax the shoulders down and lift the chest. When we get the ball outwards, we're gonna just let the elbows, you can do it with a cushion, that's fine. Let the elbows come out slightly and start to push the ball as if you're trying to squash the ball. Gradually bring it in towards your chest so your wrists are bending strongly. Release as you come forward. So bring it in, thumbs pointing to the ceiling. Squeeze, feel the wrists bending now there, stretching, and release as you come forward. Last one, bring it in just over about halfway so you've got room to rotate the wrists one way and the other. You're still pushing in towards the cushion or the ball. Well done. How far round can you get the toilet roll, Joan? <laughs> Joan's using a toilet roll, I love that. Well done. Okay, and then just pop the ball down. Give your wrists a good shake out then and a good twist out. It's a strong action. Stretch and bend the fingers and let them go down and shake them out as well. So the blood runs all the way down to those wrists and fingers. Excellent work. Right, we're going to leave the ball in between the knees. That's a good um, foundation for our hips and knees. We're going to imagine someone's pulling us up from the top of our head. So we've got the long spine. And we're going to go, gradually twist the belly button to the side, then the chest, then the shoulders, then the neck, then the head, then the eyes. And keep the knees squeezing forward. Keep your spine long and your shoulders down. Keep your spine long as you come back to the front. And imagine all those, all the fluid you squeeze out the spine comes rushing back into the spine to replenish itself. So we're squeezing the spine out like a dishcloth. So we've got a long spine, 
And we squeeze the dishcloth by turning the hips, not the hips, the belly button, the shoulder, no, the chest, the shoulders, the neck, the head, the eyes. Imagine that spine is being run out like a dishcloth. Keep it long. And as you release and come back to the front, imagine you can feel all the fluid rushing back into that spine. Lovely, well done. Let's just roll those shoulders a little bit and have a little stretch on the back if you want to. Some people like to sort of hang down, you might not like that. Don't let the head drop too much. Give yourself a little rub on the back if you want to. Well done. And a little bit of loosening off, whatever you like to do to loosen the back. Very good. Okay, get rid of your ball and we'll just do a little bit on the neck before we do our relaxation. So you can stay sitting for these. Just think about your head for a moment. <laughs> Where is my head? Is it forward? Is it back? Is it wonky? Where is it? <laughs> How does my neck feel? Is my neck tired or tense? Is it does it feel the same at the back as the front? Does it feel the same on the sides? How does my neck feel? Okay, well done. Shoulders down. Oh, actually, you can place your hands on your shoulders if, it, if it's not painful, if you can reach them. Now, without detecting any movement in the shoulders, keep the spine long, chin in. Can you turn the head without your shoulders moving at all? So my shoulders haven't moved and my head has turned and I'm pushing my head round as far as I can, and yet there's no movement in the shoulders. Then I come back to the front, just release the hands down for a moment if you need to. Did you find that your shoulders were moving or were they able to stay still? So back up, chin in, long back of neck. Can I turn my head fully without the shoulders twisting as well? Push that head round. Shoulders are still. Back to the front. Well done. Now, if you notice, if your shoulders sort of went round with you, you must be very stiff in this area here. So have a little practice at home with those ones, leaving the shoulders forwards and just getting the head to turn. This one can be a little bit stiff as well. It's dropping the ear to the shoulder. So you keep your face facing forwards and you drop the ear to the shoulder. Now, the, the same... How do I explain this? So, <laughs> this arm here, the arm that's on that side of the neck that's stretched, reach that arm away from you. And then if you want to add a little bit more, the arm that's here where you're bending towards, you can just gently place on the ear or the head. Don't pull the neck, but relax the arm on to the head. So it just adds a little bit more pull, but not, not a pull, just a bit more weight really. And release that hand, slowly come back up, loosen off the shoulders again, and to the other side. So this side's really stiff on me, I can hardly move it on this side. So reach away, and then I need that extra little bit of weight. Oh, now if you find a stiff side like me, make sure you do a bit more work on the stiff side. It could be just be the way you've slept, particularly, or had your head on the pillow or any reason really. Oh, well done. Then just do a few quicker head turns, side to side, side to side. Loosen the shoulders, loosen the neck, side to side to side. Well done. Okay, last one. Fingertips on the chin, you're pulling your face away, back, 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 chin down. And release. One more of those, pull back, pull back. These are really good ones to do if you've been working hard, sat down knitting or reading or whatever you've been doing, writing on the computer, release. Because what you won't notice is while you've been doing that, your head, even if your back hasn't rounded, your head will probably have dropped forward, yeah? So that one, you're lifting the head back and you're pulling it back. So do those as often as you like throughout the day.